We'll now look at different ways to measure position. And the idea of this is if we look at a single data point, we want a way to represent where it belongs in the relation to the rest of the data. And we'll look at three different ways to do this. The first of which is called the z-score. And the z-score tells us how far we are away from the mean. The formula for finding a z-score is to take your value, subtract your mean, and divide by the standard deviation. And the z-score represents the number of standard deviations you are away from the mean. We can have positive and negative z-scores. A negative z-score means we're below the mean, and a positive z-score means we're above the mean. Let's assume we have a student that took a statistics test. They scored an 84, and the test had a mean of 67 and a standard deviation of 6. This same student also took a calculus test. They made a 79. And the mean on this test was a 50 with a standard deviation of 9. So let's consider how they did in relation to the rest of the class. For the statistics exam, we would do their score minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. And if we work this out, we get approximately 2.83. Now let's consider how they did on the calculus exam. They had a score of 79, the mean was 50, and the standard deviation was 9. And if we work this out, we get a z-score of 3.22. Therefore, even though they had a lower score, in relation to the rest of the class, they did better on the calculus exam than on the statistics exam. The next way we'll look to measure position will be a percentile. Percentiles are defined by div dividing the data into 100 different groups. And we represent these with P, P1, P2, P3, etc all the way up to P99. And this does divide the data into 100 groups since we have everything below P1, everything below P2, below P3, etc. And then we also have the above P99. And so therefore, this is actually 100 separate groups. We'll first look at how to find the percentile. If we know what data point we want to deal with, we can find which percentile it belongs to. Here is our formula for finding the percentile. We need to order the data, and then we look at the number of values below our number x. We add 1 half and divide by the total number of values. Since we want this to be in terms of a percentage, we then multiply by 100. Let's assume we have a group of students and we have their test scores recorded. And here they are. We want to find the percentile rank of the number 83. Well, to do that, we're going to start by figuring out how many numbers are below 83. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 numbers below 83. Therefore, I take 6 plus 0 0.5, and I divide by the total number of data points I have, which is 10. And then to get this in terms of a percentage, we will multiply by 100. When we do that, we get 65%. Therefore, the value of 83 is in the 65th percentile. Now we'll go in the other direction. We're going to assume that we know our percentile, and we want to find the data value that corresponds to it. The first step is to arrange our data. We do need to be in order from the smallest to the largest or the lowest to the highest. We then use this formula, C equal to NP over 100. N is our number of total data points and P is our percentile. And then we'll divide by 100. If this number C corresponds to some kind of decimal, then we're going to round up. And then we're going to find that data value, and that will be the appropriate data value. 
On the other hand, if that value c is a whole number, we'll find the cth data value and the c plus first data value, and then we'll use the actual value that's halfway in between those two numbers. Here are the same values for the test scores that we had earlier, except that now they're arranged in order from smallest to largest. We're going to do two different percentiles. We'll start with the 75th percentile. Our formula says we need to multiply 75 by the total number of data values, which is 10, and then divide by 100. When we do, we get 7.5. And we always want to round up, so we'll round up to 8. And then we count out the 8th data value. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The 8th is the 91. So 91 corresponds to the 75th percentile. On the other hand, if I wanted to find the 40th percentile, I would multiply 40 by the fact that there are 10 data values and divide by 100 to get 4. In this case, I look at the fourth data value, which is 74, and the fifth data value, which is 78, and I find the number halfway in between, which in this case would be 76. The last measure of position we'll look at is a quartile. A quartile is similar to a percentile, except that now we divide the data into four different groups. Q2, which is our middle value that we need for our quartiles, is just the median. Q1 is the median of the lower half on the data, everything that's below the median. And then Q3 is the median of the upper half, everything that's above the median. Once again, we have our test scores ordered from smallest to largest. The easiest of our three values to find is Q2, which is the median. Here we can see that we have 10 data values. So to find the median, we need to go halfway between the fifth and the sixth, and halfway between 78 and 82 is 80. For Q1, we now only consider the data above, or below rather, below the median. So we are only considering these five values here. And we're going to find the median of those. Since there's five values, the number in the middle is 68. For our last one, Q3, now we're only gonna consider the data values above the mean, median all of these five, and the middle would be 91. Similarly, we have the, or not similarly, along the same lines, we have the interquartile range. We usually denote this by IQR, and this is found by subtracting our third quartile minus our first. For example, in our last problem, we had that Q3 was 91, and Q1 was 68. Therefore, the interquartile range would be 23. We can use our interquartile range to formally define an outlier. Informally, these outliers are very high or very low data values when we compare it to the rest of the data set. The first step in determining outliers is to multiply the interquartile range by 1.5. We then subtract this value from Q1 and we add it to Q3, and this gives us our limits for our outliers. Once again, here's our data set. We've already determined that our interquartile range was 23, so when I multiply 1.5, times my interquartile range. This is 1.5 times 23, which gives us 34.5. Q1 was 68, 
So I subtract this value from 68, and that gives me 33.5. In addition, my Q3 was 91, so I will add this value to 91, and that gives me 125.5. In this data set, our lowest value was 42, which fits in this range, and our highest value is 97, which also fits in this range. So here we have no outliers. If, however, this student that made a 42 would have instead made something like a 32, that would now be an outlier since it's below our lower limit.